which would protect everybody. Yeah, I mean, that, that herd immunity, I know you talked about yesterday when you were appearing with the Prime Minister. In, in terms of building up a herd immunity within the UK, what, I mean, what sort of percentage of people need to have contracted the virus? Probably about 60% or so. And uh, we think that this virus is likely to be one that comes back year on year, become like a seasonal virus, and communities will become immune to it. And that's going to be an important part of controlling this longer term. 60%? 60% is the sort of figure you need to get herd, herd I mean, immunity. I mean, even with that, even looking at the sort of the best case scenario, I know we were talking last week and you were saying, you know, half of 1% to 1% fatality in something like this, that's an awful lot of people dying in this country. Well, I mean, of course, we do face the prospect of, of as the Prime Minister said yesterday, of uh, an increasing number of people dying. That is a real prospect. This is a nasty disease. For most people, it's a mild disease. It's important to know we don't know yet, nobody knows, what proportion of people have this who are completely asymptomatic. So the only cases that we've really got at the moment are people who've had symptoms, or largely people who've had symptoms. That means that even estimating exactly what the uh, um, uh, death rate is from this is quite difficult because there may be many more people that haven't been uh, detected yet. And that's why some of the new tests that are being developed now are going to be so important so we can really understand how this disease is spreading. And we don't in, have a handle on that yet. In, in, in terms of, of our response to this, a couple of points I want to put to you. One, the former Prime Minister of Italy was talking to Sky News yesterday. You said yesterday we're about four weeks behind Italy. Don't we want to avoid being like Italy? And their former Prime Minister is saying, don't repeat our mistakes, don't waste time. Yes, should, we not, should we not heed some of that advice? Uh, the UK government's chief scientific advisor let slip the Boris Johnson government's cunning plan to combat the coronavirus pandemic. Apparently, the plan is not to follow what every other nation is doing in attempting to contain outbreaks, but instead, scientists have convinced Boris Johnson to adopt the herd immunity protocol which is that once at least 60% of the population has become infected, then they will develop an immunity to the virus and thus no longer spread it onto the remaining 40% or so of the population. However, the fly in the ointment in this cunning plan, as discussed by the chief scientific advisor to the government on Sky News earlier today, is that even a conservative case fatality rate of 1% would imply to expect 400,000 deaths. That's what the British government is planning for. And worse still, many countries such as China and Italy are experiencing a far higher case fatality rate of 3.5%, which would resolve to a shocking 1.4 million UK deaths. And this explains why the likes of the Cheltenham Festival has gone ahead and Britain's schools remain open whilst countries with far fewer cases such as Ireland have closed all of their schools, colleges and universities. It's because the UK government wants the people to keep calm and keep infecting. UK coronavirus infections trend forecast update for the 13th of March 2020. So the UK government this week <coughs> adopted a string of measures aimed to combat the economic consequences of the coronavirus by going on a £30 billion spending spree to try and inflate the economy whilst the herd immunity protocol was being implemented. The total number of infections recorded in the UK has now started to go parabolic, exceeding my trend trajectory by 173% due to increasing community spread that apparently the government has sanctioned. So rather than taking proactive actions to prevent infections, it seems like the UK government is encouraging infections to take place. As illustrated by the fact that the Cheltenham Festival has gone ahead that in my opinion will result in hundreds of infections. That and the schools are not being closed. 
as I was expecting to take place by now, so the UK government is not taking any serious actions to prevent the spread of infections, which ensures that the UK is heading for far more than 5,000 officially recorded as being infected by the end of March, to now probably total nearer to 10,000, and that they're already probably 10,000 infected, and worse still, the NHS is no longer going to test those suspected of being infected who are quarantining themselves at home. So that's a lot of hidden infections that the government is not going to test for. Whilst the number of deaths is similarly running at about 170% of my forecast that implies to expect at least 150 deaths by the end of March and infinitely more for April. So the UK and US continue to scramble to react to unfolding coronavirus pandemic as governments and health officials have effectively sat on their asses for the whole of February, done nothing, learned nothing from China, learned nothing from South Korea that are held up as a model for what the West should follow so as to prevent a catastrophic case fatality rate of as high as 3.5%. Whilst following South Korea's example offered a case fatality rate of 0.64%, far less than China's, as I covered in a series of articles and videos. I had expected the infections trend curves for the West to be shallower and longer, i.e. the green line, thus allowing for healthcare systems to be better able to cope with the seriously ill. Unfortunately, as we are likely to find out, uh, no coronavirus lessons have been learned. It's as though those in charge were completely oblivious to the pandemic until this week. Thus, the US and UK, to a lesser extent, look set to experience the red line. Whilst all those singing China's praises at the moment fail to realise that China's pandemic will resume when they start to lift restrictions. Though with a less sharp peak, i.e. the blue line. Which is why to expect a global recession for 2020 because the worst of the coronavirus pain is yet to come. I.e. we in the West are at the two month mark following the red line trend trajectory so you can imagine how bad things are going to quickly get. Whilst the fools at the WHO have finally declared what has been blindingly obvious for some time that a global pandemic is underway. The bottom line is that the actions being announced this week in the UK and US are too late to prevent much worse pandemic than what would otherwise have been the case. So it is time to batten down the hatches and protect ourselves in which respect vitamin D can help lessen respir respiratory tract infections as I covered in my recent videos. So perhaps the number one thing you can do right now to prepare yourselves for the coming coronavirus storm is to bolster your immune systems by getting yourself some vitamin D3 from 25 micrograms i.e. 1000 IU strength up to 100 micrograms or 4000 IU. Also make sure you are buying D3 and not the less effective D2. Do that before entertaining other supplements and devices such as virus and bacteria killing UVC lamps. Coronavirus stocks bear market trend forecast implications. The rest of this extensive analysis has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. And also ensure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel for the next video in this coronavirus pandemic series.